another episode of On Finding Peace. And I'm Chris Shea, your host. And today, the topic is a little different than what I was originally going to speak about, mainly because of the current events. And I think that is important, you know, to keep uh, relevant is to, you know, talk about current events, see what's happening in the world. Um, and actually, in my local world, uh, now that we are coming to the end of January, surprisingly so fast, that we are looking at a nice big storm coming in. Yeah, everybody on the East Coast, especially the Mid-Atlantic, is getting very worried and concerned about this big snowstorm. Uh, some people are saying that we could see much more snow than uh, the DC area has seen before. And uh, in my neck of the this area, uh, we, we can be looking at some significant snowfall for this area. So in preparation for the snowfall, and in the fact that it is quite cold outside, again, for my neck of the woods, I have with me my wonderful mug of hot chocolate. Who doesn't like hot chocolate? Anyways, so what I'd like to look at in light of that when we talk about on finding peace, what are ways in our lives that we can find in, in the ordinary uh you know, everyday moments of life. How do we begin to notice and acknowledge, you know, the world around us that can bring us and give us this quality of peace, this inner peace for which many of us long? Well, in looking, you know, at the snowstorm coming, I, I do have to say that personally, I love snow. I live cold, I live for snow. You can make it cold and windy and snowy, and I am in heaven. Uh, when most people get all excited about spring and the coming summer, that's when I start to go into my little, not the blues, but, you know, get a little down, go, oh, it's the end of winter. I'm not in love with the heat. It's got its place. But see, when the end of summer comes and everyone else is getting into their blues of, oh, summer is over, I'm going, ooh, do you feel the coolness in the air? Because that means fall and that means winter. And that makes me so happy. So I'm ecstatic. We have snow coming. We have lots of snow coming. And I've got my hot chocolate. I've got my hot teas and my coffees. And we are good. But you see, a lot of people, though, are really panicking about this. And, and you know, there, there's a lot of uh, people that I'm talking to, you know, that almost look at this as the apocalypse is happening. And, you know, the world is coming to an end. Well, for those who aren't aware, the world coming to an end, we're talking about a foot or so of snow. Now, where I'm from up north in the northern parts of the U.S., a foot of snow... Well, it's a foot of snow. You know, life doesn't stop and you keep doing what you're going to be doing. No big deal. In this part of the world, in the, in the mid-Atlantic where I am, um, a foot of snow is like the apocalypse for people. So everyone is running out to the grocery stores and filling up their cars and, you know, stocking their houses. And, you know, a, a question, I guess, as a northerner that I have is, so how long do you really think you're going to be stuck in your house when there's like 12 inches of snow? Because last I knew I'm higher than 12 inches, so I think I can get out of my house if I have to. But that's just me. Now, I'm from an area of the country where just last year they received in a couple days time good seven, eight feet of snow, uh, you know, coming to rooftops and, you know, blocking up front doors. Now, that is snow. If that happened around here, yeah, you probably wouldn't hear from me for a very long time. But that's not the case. And I'm not here to judge because, see, I'm saying all of this 
to put things into perspective. When we look at being mindful, that is living in the moment non-judgmentally, one of the tasks of being mindful is to take a look at the world around us and try to change our perspective of the world around us. Perspective being, how do I see the world? What is the world like around me? How do I view the world? You see, our perspective of life and our perspective of the world, a lot of that tends to come out of the way that I think and the way that I have learned about the world and, and things around the world. So, you know, if the world has not been a very kind place to me and I have not been around, say, the nicest of people, then odds are, now there are exceptions, but odds are I'm going to view the world in, in a quite negative light. The opposite is true. So what I'm talking about in mindfulness is if we're seeking an inner peace, and if at the moment you don't feel that inner peace, the challenge, uh, I believe, for us is then we need to stop and be mindful. What I mean by that is maybe a quick meditation. Now, when I say a quick meditation, you can get, you know, all these different ideas. You know, and when I say a quick meditation, I'm not necessarily saying light the incense, light the candle, put on the, uh, you know, new age music or any of that. We don't have to do that. Not a bad idea. I do that as well. But what I'm talking about is if in the moment you are not feeling at peace, can you stop what you're doing? Take a couple slow, deep breaths. Feel the inhale. Hold a moment. Feel the exhale. Repeat. And if we do that a couple times, what that is doing is not only slowing ourselves down physically, but mentally we're now focused on our breathing and everything else that was bothering us and around us kind of takes second stage and, and we just focus on the breathing. Now that we're focused on the breathing, we can try to just focus on what is now happening around me. Part of that is not just saying, well, it's cold out or I'm in a warm building or it's warm where I happen to be. Not necessarily. Also, when I mean what's happening around me is what's happening around me, outside of me and inside of me. So as I mindfully breathe and focus on my breath, part of what I can mindfully focus on is what am I feeling? And if those feelings are not leading me toward my inner peace, my challenge becomes identify that thought or that feeling that's taking that peace away and try to look at that situation, that feeling, that thought is coming from a situation or a perception. How do I then take a moment and try to look at that from a different perspective. Can I change my perception of what I'm feeling? For you see, when I can change that perception, then I start to change how I feel. For as I just said, you know, if we are brought up in, in an environment which is not conducive to peace and I learn certain ways of acting and thinking and being to live out in, in areas that, that I may need to act in, in that way. The great thing about changing in the mindfulness is if this is all learned behaviors, I can change that perspective. And if I change that perspective, then I'm telling myself to act in a different way. If I'm viewing the world or trying to view the world from a perspective that might lead me to much more of a peace, then I'm going to begin to act and behave in that way. So I bring up the snow 
and my experience with snow and my love of snow to talk about, you know, perspective and, and just to show this real world example that, you know, I can have a lot of the people with whom I interact uh, somewhat legitimately panicked. They are, that's their feeling. It, it's not just, you know, a word I'm using. They are feeling panicked to the people who are wiping out the grocery stores. And, you know, again, I'm not putting the judgment on that. But what I'm saying is, if that becomes the feeling, and if you don't like that feeling, if you would be one of the people who is panicking, and if you stop for a moment and said to yourself, this is not peaceful, I'm not finding my inner peace by panicking, then I would say, then let's take a look at this. So as I mentioned, can we stop a moment, do our deep breathing a few times, focus in on that, then start to find out, okay, so what is it that is causing that panic? They say, well, we got this huge snowstorm coming and I got to get all the stuff and I got to prepare and all that. And I hate snow and I hate cold. I'm going to have to shovel in. It's going to hurt and we're going to be trapped. And so they got all those negative things around and say, all right, all right. If we change our perception, change our perspective, can we find... And, and this is going to be a stretch, but if you're working towards inner peace, it's a stretch you may have to make. Because can you find something positive out of this experience? Now, for one, where I would help somebody to understand is, you know, right now you are panicking about a future event, which, as I've spoken before, you know, when we live in the future or in the past, we are going to have stress and anxiety because we have no control over those time periods. You know, the past already happened. It's over and done with. We can't go back to it. And the future, I don't have a clue. So in this present moment right now, you know, what do I have to panic about? And when I would look at this current situation with a snowstorm coming on a Friday night and I am recording this on a Wednesday afternoon, Right now, I have nothing to panic about because I don't know for sure what the future holds. That doesn't mean I don't plan, but see, I can calmly plan so that I can say to myself, all right, there's no need to panic because I don't have a snowstorm that's going to dump a feet of snow on me right this second. But what I do have is the potential of a large storm coming. So can I sit down for a moment and say, all right. Let's make a list. What are the things I need to do around the house? Do I need to go purchase things? Find out what I need to do in a calm manner and go about in that same calm manner doing them. Because what you'll find is the longer you stay in that calm manner and the more that you stay focused, that I'm doing things right now that I don't need to be panicked about. Now, I will say if there is an avalanche coming right behind me, yeah, that's a sign for panic. If I have a polar bear chasing me, that's a sign for panic because that's in my present moment. But you see, this storm coming is not in my present moment. Can I change that perspective and begin to understand this isn't happening now and it's not going to happen in, in the near future. It's gonna happen in a couple days. So let's take these couple days of calm and do what I can do in preparation. My other challenge would be, once you can calm yourself, how can you maybe look at this event, this forthcoming snowstorm that I'm elated about, but how can we look at this and maybe find some positive in it? Can we maybe find some beauty in the snow? Now, they're going to, you know, people can say, I find no beauty in like over a foot of snow that I got to shovel. All right, I didn't say find the beauty in the, the foot of snow that you have to shovel. Can you find the beauty in the snowflake as it falls? Can you find the beauty in the landscape as, as the snow lays on the ground? See, keep the focus on the present moment. When you're out there shoveling the snow, well, can you change your perspective there? Is this shoveling the snow becoming a mindful moment? Can we take this moment of shoveling the snow and make it a meditative moment? See, in my mind, what I try to do, and I'm not always successful, but what I've learned and what I try to do in my own life is how 
do I look at those situations, try to calm myself and look at it from a different viewpoint? Because right now, the way that I figure it, the cold weather gives me the excuse for my hot chocolate. And as that storm comes in, hopefully, you know, gives that uh, time that I can pull together a family that we can, uh, you know, be stuck together. Um, now I know for some people that's not a pleasant thought. Uh, but at the same time, again, how do you refocus and make it that pleasant thought? It doesn't take much, but it takes a lot of practice. Again, I'm not saying that I'm perfect at this, but what I am saying is that it is doable. So whatever is going on in your life right now as you're listening to this, whether it be the snowstorm or anything else in your life, I just encourage you to take that moment, take those deep breaths, reflect on what's causing your thinking or feeling to take you away from that peace and then I challenge you to look at it in a different perspective. Stay focused in the present. Do what you need to do to prepare for the future. But don't live in that future. Live in this present moment. I thank all of you for listening to uh, this uh, talk. And if you want to know more about me and my services, uh, you can visit me at my website www.lifesjourneyblog.com and you'll find everything that you uh, need to know about me over there and again I thank you for listening please share this with your friends and have a very mindful day